Greetings, Fortniteers. This is Jicky Seth. We're going to use Stormfarer in this match. His blackout version is my absolute favorite in the battle pass. It's a pretty cool loading screen. We're going to go over to Fortnite Wiki, my absolute favorite website, and check out what they're saying about Stormfarer. A martial arts expert seeking total control of the storm. Stormfarer is an epic outfit in Fortnite Battle Royale that can be obtained by purchasing all of the cosmetics on page 5 in the Chapter 3 Season 3 Battle Pass. He is part of the Stormfarer set. And that right there is my absolute favorite emote, Accolades. It's going to come in handy at the end of the match again. Hope you guys enjoyed my match from yesterday. I played this one yesterday. I actually got two victory royales yesterday using Stormfarer. I threw the other one up as a short because nothing really happened till the end of the match. I was just working on my quests. It's a beautiful moonlight over the water, isn't it? To the upper left. And now it looks like the sun. It's funny how quickly it changes from night to day in Fortnite. Beautiful horizon though. We went down to Manhattan Beach yesterday. It was really mobbed. I was surprised. I guess I'm used to going during the week. A lot of traffic on the way down. Oh, look at that. 5,000 for thanking the bus driver. I'll take that. It's a pretty cool contrail. You get that in the Chapter 3, Season 3 Battle Pass. And I spy with my little eye pontoon to the upper right, so I'm going to hit that first. I was initially planning on following Darth Vader's ship until I saw a pontoon. So back to Stormfarer. He comes in various selectable styles. Stormfarer, which I'm using in this match, and Storm Brawler with the helmet. And he has various super levels. Platinum Rift, Lapis Slurp, and Orc Blaze. Right now, his super level is considered off. And my boy here comes in various colors also. Default, Blackout, which is my absolute favorite, and Ice White, that looks pretty cool too. It's like an arctic camo. And here's some trivia on Stormfarer. Stormfarer's ID is CIDA394 Athena Commando M Darkstorm. Before Stormfarer's release in update version 21, his name was Blackout, and the styles were different. Blackout was the default style and only color style. The Storm Brawler style was being worked on. Stormfarer's icons were different before update version 21. He was meant to be in the item shop and would be rare before being changed to epic. To me, he'll be legendary. Especially after this match. I find this interesting. Stormfarer's cloak has its very own wiki page, so let's see what they're saying there. The dark symbol of a dangerous mission. If you're wondering what his symbol is all about, the Stormfarer's cloak is an epic bag bling in Fortnite Battle Royale that could be obtained on page 5 in the Chapter 3 Season 3 Battle Pass. The Stormfarer's cloak is part of the Stormfarer set. Doesn't really tell us too much there. There is some trivia also. His cloak's ID is BID 998 Darkstorm Mail. Its rarity has been changed from rare to epic in the update version 21. Just like the skin. What are all the items in the Stormfarer set you might be wondering? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Stormfarer outfit, the Stormfarer's cloak, Storm Shielder Blades, and the Stormfarer Strike Spray. Here we are at the gas station. There's a nice flopper. I might fry that up. I'm just kidding. I don't eat fried food. It's bad for my heart. Ooh, I'll take that. And I'll keep the Striker Burst as well. There's a video game machine in there, if you haven't noticed. I wonder what video game it is. Way back in the day, when I was like 11 or 12, I had a paper route and I'd take my 10 speed 
about a half a mile from my house, and I'd stop at 7-Eleven and play arcade games beforehand. They had Tron, Pole Position, and what was the other one? Some baseball game. I can't remember what it was called. That was way back in the early 80s. It must have been after the Tron movie came out. Anyone see the original? How about the sequel? I remember one morning, I was delivering papers at the condo complex, and someone backed up into me, destroyed my bike. My dad made him buy me a new one. My dad was a tough dude. Ex-Marine, New England carpenter, hunter, all the manly checkboxes checked. All right, we're gonna sneak up on this dude. Got him. Now let's take out the other dude. That's one ski sweat out of the game. I noticed a bunch of ski sweats show up in the game yesterday. Ooh, I'll take that. Haven't been too good with the sniping this season, but I'll give it another go. So don't forget to do those island hopper quests. We have this weekend and next weekend to whip them off. There's some pretty cool creative maps that you can go into, like Parkour Universe. I'm just joking, I can't stand parkour. Thanks to Fall Guys, that game soiled me to the parkour. I had Kyle do those quests for me. In exchange for doing his vibing quests, he never does his in-game quests for some reason. Yet he wants everything from the battle pass. Go figure. So yesterday I actually completed one of the island hopper quests myself. I used vending machines in Blimp Wars. It's pretty easy. What are some of the other games? Color Dash. Ultimate Murder Mystery. I haven't tried that one yet. Prop Hunt Modern Mall. I had Kyle do that one, but I figured out a strategy. You start off as a prop, just run around at the beginning of the game and get taken out. That will turn you into a hunter as soon as humanly possible. Because to complete those challenges, which is eliminate three prop opponents, you have to be a hunter. And there's also the Nindo 2022 challenges. Those are interesting. You have to come in top six in solos, duos, trios, or squads. You could either do build or no build. The other ones are survive storm circles, catch fish, and eliminate opponents. So get to grinding on that. I like to use the horn, especially when it gives me a thousand XP. That was a pretty funny quest. And look at that, I got 15,000 XP for completing three daily quests. Make sure when you log into Fortnite to whip off your daily quests first. Those disappear after 24 hours. And they're just ready in the future. That would both seem too good on left terrain. You'll notice as I'm smashing through stuff, I am losing a little bit of health on the battle bus. I love the way they've decorated the map. It's part of the vibing party after defeating the I.O. I wonder who the adversary is going to be this season. Is it the Syndicate? Or are the Syndicate the anti-hero? They seem to be running the show this season. As you complete vibing quests, you can learn more about the story. We're going to head over to Dixerto.com and see what they have to say about this week's five and quests. I've completed all those. The very last one was taken out Darth Vader. I threw up a short yesterday. And once again, the battle bus comes in real handy when you want to take out Darth Vader. The Darth Vader ship does have a landing spot near the battle bus on the beach. Alright, we're just going to catch some fish here. That is part of the Nindo 2022 challenge. You have to catch a whole mess of fish. Alright, Fortnite Vibe and Quests have arrived. Giving players another way to earn some extra XP. Level up their battle pass and get some free cosmetics. Here's every challenge released so far. Alongside the traditional weekly challenges, Epic Games have now added another set of seasonal quests for players to complete. These are called Vibin' Quests. 
and they're related to the story of Chapter 3, Season 3. They pretty much replaced the Resistance quest from last season. Each part of the Vibin quest line will progress the Fortnite story. Ding, ding, ding. I'll say that one more time for those of you in the back. Each part of the Vibin quest line will progress the Fortnite story. So there you go. As players discover the secrets behind the reality routes that are spreading across the island, this is also a great way to earn some bonus XP. Just dawned on me, Groot might be a cool skin to use this season, since he is a tree. Below you'll find all the vibrant quests released in Fortnite so far, the rewards you can earn, and details on when the next set of challenges will be released. We're going to skip over weeks 1 and 2, since we're on week 3 right now. Just got to scroll down the page here while we're driving the battle bus. You can pick up a grappler glove right there. I love this. Those are cool. They look really good with Adira, or the Crawler, or Fade, or any other skin that's purple. I mentioned that in the last video. I think they're going to add Indiana Jones to one of those temples. You guys remember that movie, The Temple of Doom? That was awesome. Alright, I found it. Fortnite Vibing Quests Part 3, or otherwise known as Week 3. Establish Device Uplink. Damage opponents using a Star Wars weapon. You have to do 500 damage. I wonder which NPC they're going to stick here at the Daily Bugle. I'll grab this zip line here. Drop off at my favorite building. I wouldn't mind moving into this apartment on the top floor, of course. I can't stand to have someone living above me. Alright, the Fortnite Vibe and Quest Week 4 continuation. Establish device uplink again. Plant listening devices at Imperial Docking Bays three times. Establish another device uplink. And finally, defeat Darth Vader. When do the next set of Fortnite Vibin Quests unlock? Part 4 of the Fortnite Vibin Quests are scheduled to be released on Tuesday, July 5th. Now the math don't sound right on that, since this upcoming Tuesday is June 28th. Yeah, we'll see what happens come Tuesday. And there's one last paragraph that DickCerto.com has. All rewards you can earn with the Fortnite Vibin Quests, as well as getting a nice boost of XP for each Vibin Quest you complete, you'll also be able to unlock the Bushy's Bulb Backbling Cosmetic when you've finished all of the challenges in Part 2. I featured that in my video yesterday. Hope you enjoyed that. You all should have unlocked that by now. Goes good with the Bush Ranger outfit. We're just running around the Daily Bugle here. I'll be honest with you, when I was playing this game yesterday, I had no idea I was going to get a Victory Royale. I was just kind of messing around. Alright, we're going to go in here. I'm looking for an upgrade station. I cannot remember where it is at the Daily Bugle. I know there's a bounty board here in this room. I'll trade to Chug Splash. There's the bounty board. Who are we hunting? Raven. Otherwise known as Dominator25. So I just asked the question, which NPC are they going to stick at the Daily Bugle this season? Which leads me to this. We're over on GameSpot.com right now. Fortnite characters in Chapter 3 Season 3 all NPC locations. I'm curious myself. There are new friendly faces to meet this season. Here's where to find all Fortnite NPCs in Chapter 3, Season 3. There's some clown berries. It's Fortnite Chapter 3, Season 3, and that means brand new Fortnite characters or NPCs are scattered around the island. Alongside exploring major new features, like the Battle Pass, new weapons, and map changes, you'll want to meet each of these denizens of the island. Fortnite NPCs are important because they offer quests, exotic weapons, and sell loot and services such as guns and rifts. Even if you don't want to fill out your collection book in-game by having met all new Fortnite NPCs, you should do it simply for the gameplay advantages they offer. 
Here's a rundown of all Fortnite NPCs in Chapter 3, Season 3. Join us as we discover all of their locations and map them out. Fortnite Chapter 3, Season 3 NPCs. At launch, there are 27 NPCs on the island. They dropped this article on June 23rd, which was last Thursday, so it may or may not have been updated since then. For now, all but one are friendly, non-hostile folks, which makes sense given the season's good vibes. Are you guys feeling the good vibes? I sure am. Darth Vader is the single hostile exception, and will drop his mythic lightsaber when defeated. But otherwise, it's all dance parties and roller coasters. We've pinned down the exact locations of all Fortnite Season 3 NPCs, and can include a fully labeled map below, thanks to iFireMonkey's data mining efforts. Note that because Darth Vader's location changes with each round, he's not shown on the map or in the list below. Make sure to head over to GameSpot.com and check out that map. I will point out, I have noticed that Darth Vader lands at only a handful of spots, so once you memorize those, it'll be pretty easy to track. Alright, you guys ready for the NPC list? Here goes. Lil Whip at Coney Crossroads. Rustler at Shifty Shafts. The Paradigm. She can be found at the 7 Outpost 2, northwest of Log Jam Lumberyard. The Scientist at the Synapse Station. The Origin at the 7 Outpost 3, northeast corner of the island. The Visitor, launch pad east of the Sanctuary. Sunbird or Moonhawk at the Temple, northeast of the Daily Bugle. Guaco at Greasy Grove. Mancake at Rocky Rills, the Bow Brothers at Condo Canyon, the Imagined at 7 Outpost 5, west of Rave Cave, Cuddle Team Leader, Rave Cave, Upper Northern Platform, Stashed at Chonker Speedway, Haven, Ridgeline Ranger Station, west of Coney Crossroads, Jonesy the First, the Joneses, north side, does not spawn in every round, because you might also get Ludwig on the south side of the Joneses, Bunker Jonesy also on the south side, Mullet Marauder on the north side of the Joneses, Metal Team Leader Shroom Chalet, northwest of Reality Falls, does not spawn in every round. Same goes for Cuddlepool, also found at the Shroom Chalet and Quackling at the Shroom Chalet. Still four players left. Let's see if we can take this dude out. Got one hit. Nope. Storm's gonna push him out too. Where are they gonna go? We'll relocate to this tree over here. And continue reading. My favorite, Kyle at the Log Jam Lumberyard. Let's see if we can pick this dude off. Got one hit, two hits. Pretty much just shooting blind at this point. I'm gonna try and shoot through that wall there. Got another hit. Storm's creeping up on me. Nope, nothing there. Speaking of Kyle, who is found at the Log Jam Lumberyard, which they've redesigned. Make sure to check that out. There's a small reality tree there now. He gives you the chug cannon. That comes in handy, although it does take two slots on your loadout. And who are the other NPCs this season? Cryptic at the Rave Cave, interior dance floor. Fishstick at Sleepy Sound. The Foundation at the Seven Outpost Seven, east of the Sanctuary. And there's only three players left in the game. One of them is behind that armored wall there. I'm gonna build right next to their build. And here they come. I was not expecting that. Luckily, I had a gun in hand. Look at that, I'm an SMG specialist. I'll pick up their gold SMG combat. And get out of here. I don't have any shield or health, 
So I'm gonna have to hold on to 71 health. I don't know if they saw me go way back here. There they are, running around. Got one hit on them. And there's two other NPCs this season. Meow Skulls at the Scratch Pad, west of Reality Falls, and the Order at the Seven Outpost 4, south of Condo Canyon. Alright, you guys ready for the end of the match? I'm going to put that gold combat SMG up front. Just make sure all my weapons are reloaded. That's importante. And it's go time. Let's go get them. Let's see where they at. Here comes the bullets. Got a couple walls up in time. And they're building up. We're going to take out their ring. What's up, Crystal? You are out of the game. Victory Royale for Stormfarer. It's my second one this weekend. I love this emote. It's called Accolades. I don't think it's in the item shop anymore. I'm so happy I picked it up. It really comes in handy when you get a Victory Royale. Don't forget to support a creator. J-I-K-K-Y-S-E-F That spells Jicky Seth. And that happens to be me. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and have a great fortnight.